congratulations on the victory. Uh, first of all, how's the hand? I see a big bucket of ice right now. Oh, it's good. It hurts. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, it broke. Uh, she threw that first high kick, and I went to go block, and my fingers were open, and it threw them all backwards the wrong way. So that was blocking in the first round? Yeah. So when that does happen, do you have to adjust, and do you have to like, change any of the game plan approach, or do you just bite down and fight through until it numbed up? Oh, it didn't numb up. It kept hurting. Um, so I just started throwing more right hands than anything. I tried to throw a couple jabs out there, but uh, obviously it wasn't working. At one point, I uh, grabbed my hand, kind of circled around, grabbed my hand, was trying to pull on my fingers a little bit and only shot pain up my arm. So I was like, you know what? All I got to do is bite down on this mouth guard and get going. Well, online during the fight, it seems a lot of people on Twitter were surprised at Aspen Lad's maybe approach or game plan or lack of things that they've seen her do in previous fights. Did anything she do in there surprise you or lack of what she did surprise you? Honestly, I thought she was going to come out. I thought uh, she was probably going to try takedowns a lot more. Um, but, you know, that's the exact fight I expected from her. And for me, it was just kind of one of those things to where stepped up, took the fight, I had a game plan, and, you know, I mean, stuff like this happens. you got to kind of adapt. And my only thing was to kind of ignore this and focus on what she was doing. I told myself at one point in the fight, I was like, hey, I don't got to make this a dog fight. I just got to do exactly what I got to do to get my hand raised. And then she seemed surprised that you had gotten your hand raised at the end. Maybe she was disappointed or maybe she had, maybe her coaches had told her, were you surprised at her reaction? Yeah, actually, uh, I went up and hugged her at the end, told her good job and uh, thanks for the fight. And she was all like, I'll see you again. This was a close fight. And I was just like, okay. And I know... You know, listening to her corners and stuff, um, obviously the goal is to listen to my corners, but I was listening to hers, and throughout the entire fight, they were screaming at her, and they are like, we need more, she's breaking, she's tired, and I was just like, what is going on here? But, you know, I was just kind of focused on what I was doing and listening to the comedy show. And, it, <laughs> uh, and I believe you call her Sarah McMahon. Was that the name we heard after? Yeah, you know, I mean, I respect Sarah a ton as a person and as an athlete. Um, as far as climbing in these rankings and stuff, it honestly makes sense. Uh, you know, I mean, you pull up the amount of wins, and it was Amanda leading, and then it was me, and then it was Sarah. And Amanda and Juliana are fighting for a world title. You know, the other girls ranked above are lined up right now, and I feel like Sarah and I make sense. We were originally supposed to fight on Fight Island back in September of, I don't know, yeah, 2020. And um, I sustained an injury that pulled me from that fight, but... You know, it's no disrespect to her. It just makes sense if uh, you want to climb up here. Raquel, to your left. Congratulations once again. Four wins in a row now. W what do you attribute this run to? Because it seems like you're on the best run of your career right now. This is the best I feel that you've looked in your career. Do you agree with that? What do you attribute that to? Absolutely. You know, I mean, for one, just I've had the highest of highs and the lowest of lows in the sport. I've sustained so many injuries. I was on a four-fight win streak when I fought Misha and just feeling like I was really like climbing and then all of a sudden I had to go into major surgeries and I had a lot of setbacks and then medical issues and it was just it's been one thing after another after another that just really took a toll on my soul and trying to get back in there it was just hard like my body wasn't ready or different things were happening and as much as I'm strong-minded it was breaking me emotionally but I was like no I'm not going to give up I'm gonna keep going and finally I just got to a point that I was like you know what it's about longevity and what I really want to do here I had to really sit back reset and that's what I did, you know, I switched up my team, I switched up a lot of things, nutrition, um, all kinds of things to figure out my medical state, to figure out my physical state. I spent a lot of time, I had to learn true patience, and that was really hard. Um, so just kind of doing that, now I feel the healthiest I've ever been, and you know, I'm in my prime, I'm excited, and I'm hungry. So it's just, you know, my coaches have always told me, you know, when you let that person go that we see every single day in the gym, nobody's gonna stop you. And I'm only getting more and more comfortable in my skin with things and my hands and every technique that I have. And so now I'm on a mission. This division looks a lot different than it did when you started this run, right? We got a new champion, Juliana Pena. The long reign of, of Amanda Nunes came to an end. Of course, they're going to rematch. But do you feel like timing is on your side right now? Do you feel like things are just falling into, your place, falling into place and everything's kind of coming up rocky right now? Absolutely. You know, it's kind of like the Ultimate Fighter. Everybody was like, hey, the journey of the Ultimate Fighter, you have to win the Ultimate Fighter in order to get in the UFC. That was never my journey. And I think a lot of people expected Juliana and myself to line up for the finale on the Ultimate Fighter. And now that things are playing out the way they are, I'm like, I just feel like, you know, everything's the universe has a way and we're aligning for a different reason on the biggest stage.
Are you kind of hoping Juliana wins again so that this division can officially move forward and we can start welcoming in new challengers? Because chances are if Amanda wins, they, they'll probably run it back a third time. So, I mean, I, I know you don't typically like root for fighters, but is there a part of you competitively as someone who wants to be a world champion that's hoping Juliana Pena gets it done again? You know, so from the competitive aspect, yeah, just because obviously there is a holdup. So if Juliana wins, like you said, uh, it moves forward. If Amanda wins, then hey, they got to do a third match. And that's frustrating, especially for us fighters who are trying to climb. Like, I want to climb, but that's going to put months there um, in between that. So do I hope that? Yeah. Do I necessarily want to see Juliana win again? Probably not. But at the end of the day, you know what? She did what she had to do. Congratulations to her. Um, I'm focused on what I'm doing, and it is what it is. Like, like I said, I mean, one more fight and having that title contention, and you can't tell me my name's not back up there to have that talk. Can you, can you, can you say why that wouldn't make you happy? Like, just not competitively, but can you, can you talk about why? Uh, you know, honestly, I mean, really, it's just, I think anybody who's ever done interviews with me, they know when you're locked in a house with somebody, uh, feelings build there. And, you know, Juliana is just one of those people that, like, I honestly felt bad for her on The Ultimate Fighter. Everybody was making fun of her. They were kind of being bullies, and I was just like, that's not how I was raised. So I try to hang out with her and befriend her, and she just has her own personality, and people's personalities don't match sometimes, and that's okay. But she, uh, she was somebody that struck a different kind of nerve with me and for those seven weeks that we were on the show, and it's just been one of those things to where, as a competitor, I want that fight, um, regardless if she's champion or not. Raquel, um, Sarah has mentioned that she would like to fight for the title. So if you guys do get matched up, do you see that as a title eliminator? Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, seeing Amanda Nunes uh, take a loss, I mean, you had a, a pretty tough defeat against her. So was that in a way, did that change anything to your career? Like, okay, like things could open up again for me? No, honestly, it just it stirred up the division, which I think gave a lot of excitement to all the other competitors in there. You know, a lot of people you get kind of the same way with Ronda, and no disrespect to anybody. They freaking do exactly what they need to do, but it, it's almost like when you have one person who's constantly winning, people start marking them as these invincible people, and at the end of the day, they're just people, and they're doing what they need to do, but everybody's beatable. And so I feel like with Amanda losing, like it was just that reminder to the division that she's a human being and she's beatable. Um, for me, obviously, uh, that was a rough time when her and I ended up fighting. Uh, it was just kind of coming back from an 18-month layoff, coming back from a, uh, the injury I sustained in my leg and that nerve damage I've never experienced. Almost had to have my leg amputated and me emotionally just rushed back in. I was nowhere near ready for that. So as a competitor, like I would love to you know, redeem myself in that fight. You think she gets it done against Juliana and gets her belt back? You know, me and Amanda, we met because of the sport, and I've always been a fan of hers. Um, my family's always rooted for her, and so, uh, you know, when it comes to the rematch, I'm rooting for her. Thank you.